Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor. Now if you've been painting with us for a while, you're probably familiar with our go-to brushes. What are they, Keenan? Round two, round six. Round two and a round six. And when I started Let's Make Art, I really wanted to do two things. One, I really wanted to limit the supply offering so you guys wouldn't feel overwhelmed with choices because when you're starting a new hobby, you don't want to know everything that's available. That's like a lot of information. And the second thing I wanted to do is to share exactly what I was using with you to make your job so much easier and you can get to the painting faster, which is the best part, right? Totally. Now, the thing with the round two and the round six is when I started this a few years ago, these were my go-to brushes. And as my journey continued as an artist and as a teacher, I've continued to learn and I've continued to branch out, painting new things, trying new supplies, trying new brushes. And so now I've added brushes to what I usually go to when I paint. And we have created a Sarah's favorite brush roll just for you guys. Ooh, ooh. I'm super excited for this. And I'm gonna go over what's inside this brush roll, uh, what are the, how are these brushes used, what I use them for, and uh, you guys ready? Yes, I'm Let's ready. Let's do it. Okay, so here is how it's gonna come in this beautiful package. And you'll see here that I have this informational card that tells you what brushes and then what I use them for. And then here, we have a custom made roll. Now this roll was made for us from uh, Wheeler Bag Co, which is a wonderful small business and he is so amazing. And I was able to choose the colors for this. I just love the tan with the leather strap. I really mm -hmm. do, I think it is gorgeous. So here are the six brushes that you are going to get, okay? And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna say them all by name, and then I'm gonna go through and give you a demonstration and then share with you how I've used them in my personal work. Sweet. So um, the first brush we have here is a round one from Let's Make Art Classic series. The second brush is a liner two from the Let's Make Art Classic series. Our third brush is a Princeton Velvet Touch round eight. Right there. Mm. Our fourth brush is a round 12 from the Let's Make Art Classic series. The fifth brush is a one inch wash from Let's Make Art Classic. And my last one is a Raphael Soft Aqua Quill six brush. It is my favorite brush. I love it so much. That was an emotional reveal. It is emotional. <laughs> I have an emotional connection to this paintbrush, but I really love all of them and they all serve a really wonderful purpose. And so, um, what I have out here today is I'm using Arches paper to give you guys a demonstration. I have some pigment uh, cake pans here. You can use them with liquid watercolor. Excuse me. Ugh. But for me, when I use 100% um, cotton paper like Arches, I like to use tube or cake watercolor. So that's why I have a slight uh, switch here in supplies. Okay, so the first couple brushes I'm gonna talk about, and I'm gonna do these three simultaneously. Um, so that was a plot twist. <laughs> two smallest ones and then the big wash. Well, and it's mostly because I'm gonna show you some artwork okay, and cool. all three brushes are used in those. Um, so what I use my round one for here is it's a nice small little brush and it's perfect for details. And you guys know me, when I'm painting along, I love to do you know larger, loose paintings and then go in there and just do some nice, sharp little details. And I love this brush because it's a little bit smaller than my round two, which means I can get a thinner line, but there's still enough bristles there that I'm picking up paint. There are, I will say, there are smaller rounds than this paintbrush. There's like a five over zero, which is like, the tiniest little thing. But I personally don't use those a lot because I feel like I can't pick up enough paint or water on those brush brushes, so I get kind of frustrated. So the smallest that I'll go is a round one. And this just gives you a little bit finesse, like because it's a little bit smaller with the bristles, you can get smaller dots, smaller areas, that kind of thing. You can really go in there and tighten things up. So I'm just kind of showing you how small um, you can go with this brush. And actually, am I going too high on the paper? Is it okay? It's okay. You can okay. go, you definitely can go lower if you want, because I can get the side. 
The nice thing is I still have the versatility though. You know what I mean? Because yeah. for me, I don't want to have to switch brushes a ton of time. So if I can do a thicker line that goes to a thinner line, I love that. Ooh. Yeah. So this is just a great detail brush. This is like my finishing brush here. My second brush that I use a lot as a finishing detail brush is my liner too. Now, liner brushes are so fabulous, especially if you're painting two things, whiskers on an animal and grass. When, if you paint those two things pretty regularly, please do yourself a favor and get a liner brush. It will help you out so much. Because the bristles are so long and thin, it's much easier to get a thin line because you don't have the chance, like this round one is shorter and it's more likely that you can get like a thicker stroke on accident, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where with a liner, if you're just doing vertical hold, you can do a thin line forever. All day. Look at that go. So it's just a wonderful, wonderful tool to have, especially if you know you're gonna be doing some line work, some thin lines, whiskers, and I've been doing landscapes a lot recently, which you guys will see, and I do a lot of like grass detail work in the foreground, and these liner brushes come in clutch because I don't have to worry about accidentally getting a really thick brush stroke. Mm -hmm. So, now the third brush I'm gonna show you, and the reason why I'm including it in this round here, or in these three brushes, is because having a wash brush is wonderful to lay down color and to do it quickly. Well, maybe I should show the artwork first and then I'll show how to use the okay. wash, okay? So the paintings that I'm gonna show you right now are, I've, I've used, I wanna show the detail aspects of these paintings. So if you look at this like fall forest scene and you see these small trees, mm -hmm. that's with a round one. Okay. These branches are with liner brushes. Oh. And these birds are also with a round one. They're nice, oh, here, let me put the birds in. These birds are nice and small, so I can get a really tight stroke there with my round one. Now the background, this gradient wash, is done with my wash one inch brush. Mm. So that's why, for me, I feel like these three brushes go together because this wow. is how I lay my stuff down, and then this is how I finish it. My liner two and my round one is how I finish my paintings. Here are other examples where I'm doing a wash in the background. I have, you can see my long grass here, my thin grass, my dots that I use for my flowers. Those are round ones. My stems, or not my stems, I guess they're branches. They're branches. They're Here's, also stems. <laughs> Here's more examples. Long grass, detail work, washes in the background. My trees are with my liner. And you can actually do trees with your wash, and I'll show you how to do that too. Okay. So, for our wash, I'm gonna do a quick color transition. So I'm gonna start with a blue and then transition to a green. So I'm just grabbing some blue here, working it blue. So see how quickly I can fill that area? Yes. And then I'm just gonna grab some green, introduce some green to the area. And then just keep painting. So you're, you're not too worried about getting those blooms, hard edges, um, different textures. You can do color transitions so much easier. And look how smooth that looks. That's extremely smooth. So if you're, if you're interested in doing mostly landscapes or filling up an entire composition, then the one inch wash is really gonna be your friend. And especially if you're painting around this size, nine by 12 or bigger, and if you're painting on that whole paper, you're really gonna want a larger wash brush to cover that area faster. They do offer them in different sizes, so if you are interested in doing smaller landscapes, then you can, you can still use this, but you can even get a smaller size too. It's up to you. Yeah. Okay, so those were the three. Now, the fourth brush I'm gonna show you is this Princeton Velvet Touch Round 8. Now this is pretty similar to the rounds that we use. It is a round brush and it's Princeton, which is an excellent watercolor 
uh, paintbrush manufacturer. But the reason why I really love the Velvet Touch series is because I feel like the point that they get with their bristles is so much sharper and fine than any other paintbrush that I've experienced that is still a round brush. And I love that because I'm able to do thin and thick strokes easily and I can even do line work almost with these brushes. And I wanna show you this floral painting that I did. Literally only using this paintbrush. What? Yes. This whole thing? The whole thing I was able to paint using this one paintbrush because you're able to get washes down because it's around so it can uh -huh. hold water and you can lay it down. And then this what? really delicate line work, the lines here that we have on our florals, I can do with this really sharp top and it's just smooth. It goes so smooth. So I'm just gonna show you, I mean, I don't know if I have enough time to do that whole thing here, but um, I'm gonna pick up some paint. Two days later. <laughs> And just kind of show you that like when I'm doing florals and I'm doing petals and then I can even draw with it, you know? Ooh, this is cool. So you can really like get that line work done, do the washes, do the blending. It truly, truly is a fabulous brush. I love it. And they offer this one in different sizes. The round eight is what I use the most. I think it's a good balance of like, I can get a pretty wide area, but it's not so big that I feel like I don't have a lot of control. But this is the magical thing too about art supplies is you guys are going to try this and you're going to be like, oh, this brush is so great. I kind of want this in four other sizes because I really love how it feels and go for it. Like, your opinion on supplies is just as valid as my opinion. And this is just an opportunity for you guys to try other materials and see what it is that you like. Hopefully, obviously, you guys already like the round six and the round two, but these are compliments to how you can add this and really elevate your paintings, take it to the next step, and really flesh out your art supply materials. And I'm just gonna do one more little, I just kinda wanna show off how thin this can go, how easy it is to go from like thin to thick, back to thin again, like. Yeah, that's a nice and loose. super versatile brush. I love it so much. Okay, now for our round 12 here, I wanted to show this painting. Oh. So I love round 12s and you guys are a little bit more familiar with them because we've used them in projects before. But if you haven't uh, gotten this paintbrush yet, or maybe you're just ready for another one, this is a wonderful brush because it's larger. So it's so much easier to do larger paintings and also paint loosely. So with this, like I love doing loose florals. And with this painting, I was able to do large brush strokes. You can see that I have some detail work here. The brush strokes are still a little bit big but it really allows you to kind of play with gesture painting. You can play, you can do the strokes of a flower. You know, you can paint a flower really quick. You can even use it for painting the background because it's so big that you can fill up space fairly quickly too. So this is a wonderful thing to add if you're interested in going larger on your paintings, want to work a little bit more on your brush strokes, on your gesture, painting a little bit bigger. And here, let me do a quick like floral where like, there's a petal, there's a petal. Oh. And it's just nice and loose. That's a real flower. It is a I've seen that. And I also use the round 12, like when I'm doing landscapes, when I'm trying to fill in this area, like my one inch wash would be too big to do that grass. This is where I would use my round 12 to put in that wash or even my velvet touch round eight, put it in, drop in some color and let that just blend and bleed. That's awesome. Okay. So our very, very last brush here is our Raphael Soft Aqua Quill 6. 
I love this brush so much. And I didn't even know that quill brushes existed until I went on a creative retreat with an artist. Her name's Emily Jeffords. And she was doing like a watercolor demonstration. She brought her supplies. And she knew that I painted watercolor. And she was just like, hey, have you ever tried one of these brushes? And I was just like, no, I've never even heard of them. She was just like, try it. It is a fabulous brush. And I fell in love immediately, right then and there, I painted these two paintings with this brush. Wow. So the wonderful thing about quill brushes is they're made to hold a lot of water, like so, so much water. So if you're, if you're doing loose, larger paintings, and you want to just keep on going and not have to worry about, you know, re-upping on the water, re-upping on the color, all of this stuff, then quill brushes are fabulous. They're just beautiful. And you can see here with this floral painting that I've done, that's how I do the background. Oh. This wash is I use quill brushes because it can go forever. And I get these interesting textures and lines. I don't necessarily want an even wash like I would with I would use my one inch wash brush. I want it to feel uh, uneven a little bit. I want it to feel, I, have, I want to have spots where it's darker and lighter. You can see I did some salt work here too. But Good when call. I do like these big florals, these backgrounds, and let me find a landscape too. I'm gonna use my quill. The other thing that I use my quill for almost religiously is when I'm painting skies. And that's just because I can just put in those clouds quickly. And do you want, here I can see if I can do a quick little sky. Oh yeah. I've seen you put a sky together quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna use my, get my quill. And you can see like how much water this is that holding. That thing is thirsty. Yeah, and it's perfect too because especially when you're using a 100% cotton paper, you'll notice that the paper wants more water than maybe what we're used to with Canson or the Let's Make Art watercolor paper. And that can be frustrating if you're using tight brushes that don't hold a lot of water because you have to go back and forth so much, like this paper is thirsty. But with the quill brush, it holds so much water that it works really well. And I would say that with this quill brush, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are using a high quality paper that will be able to accept all of that water. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna paint, get like a gray color here. What color is this? There we go. And it's nice and it's wet. I'm gonna put in some clouds. Can we do the side cam? Maybe that won't be as glary. I need to adjust the side cam or Here. pull the paper down a little bit. Let's see if I can hold it up. Yeah, look at that. And I can still get pretty thin lines too and that's the nice thing about quills as opposed to mops mop brushes are also designed to hold a lot of water but they usually don't have any like a point mm. because it doesn't really matter you're just trying to fill up the space faster but with these quill brushes they're designed to hold a lot of water while simultaneously having a point at the end so if you do want to get thinner lines detail lines you have that capability we're going to call this the camel Okay. Because it retains a lot of water. Retains a lot of water. And look, I can even put in a ground right here. It does a really good job. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's just like, just like that, I have a nice base for a landscape painting. Wow. Now, one warning with this brush is because it carries so much water, if you... <laughs> I have a tendency to go in and out of colors a lot. Like I change my line, mind about which colors I'm using a lot. And um, I just, my, my paint water is just like dark mud <laughs> at the end of it. Cause I'm always like rinsing and changing and going back and forth, going in and out. But anyways, um, now a lot of these paintings and styles might be new to you guys, right? You're, you haven't seen them. And that's because when I paint the Let's Make Art 
watercolor projects, I'm using a round two and a round six. And I'm making sure that I'm using the supplies that you guys will be using so you will have the same um, experience that I do. And now with this new um, brush roll, you guys can add and experiment. You can try doing large paintings, you can try doing landscapes, florals, portraits, like you're just adding to your knowledge of what brushes that you wanna to go to. Now when it comes to art and painting, you don't have to have everything that's brand new and all of everything in order to do good work. You simply don't. But it's so much easier when you have the right tools and you know how to use them because then that way you don't have 70 paintbrushes and you don't know which one to grab you have six or eight and you're just like i know that with that group of paintbrushes i know how to use them i can try these new things i can learn more and experiment more and i don't have to get frustrated with the supplies that i'm using just make sure that you're using the tools that complement your goals and what you're trying to go for. Now for me, I really wanted to get better at landscape painting. I really wanted to get better at florals. And by utilizing these new materials and learning how to use them, I feel much more confident and capable in painting what it is that I want to paint. So I'm so excited that you guys have this opportunity to get this brush roll. And I wanted it to be light canvas on purpose because I think it is gorgeous when you get paint bleeds on them <laughs> a That's little what I bit. I was going to say while well, I was right? excited about it. Yes. Yes. And you'll notice too that there's a couple extra slots. Now we did that on purpose and that's because if you do have a round two and a round six, you can slip them right in and they all fit just fine. Or maybe you want to go and explore and try your own brushes. You can swap, switch things out. This is wonderful for traveling. You can roll this up, put it in your backpack and go. I know that when um, I travel and I go to places to paint, a brush roll is how I take my brushes with me. So you can put them all back in here. Just roll it up. And you're ready to go. Boom. That's it. So I'm super excited. I hope you guys love and enjoy this. I hope this gives you an opportunity to try new things and branch out. Trust yourselves as artists. Make new things. Um, I'm really excited for this. I appreciate you listening and we'll see you guys next time.